kind of looked similar in that we saw a lot of high, sk high skill ceiling players, a lot of uh, flashes of brilliance, but it took a while. It took a couple seasons before they really started winning. Yeah, especially with Samsung Blue. That oh, was yeah. a little bit out of left field. Well, there's an Italy ban, so that answers that. Gragas ban as well, so not going to let CJ first pick that one. I doubt CJ's going to be that concerned. Ambition has a very wide champion pool for a jungler, so you can sort of work your way around that. If you're Ambition, of course, will we see the Lee Sin tonight? I really like watching his early aggression on the Warrior Enchant Lee Sin. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, too, is that if all else fails, you can always default to something like Nunu even for Ambition. So he really is someone that's hard to touch through bans right now, like most of CJ, actually. There's a Rumble ban coming in from CJ. Very interesting that they would ban the Rumble here because Samsung has a lot of threats and the Rek'Sai is typically a very nice ban to have against Kuve. Now, Kuve may resort to Rek'Sai now or to a possibility of a Hecarim, but banning Rek'Sai on blue side means that Samsung can't flex it. So I, I expect Samsung to take that Rek'Sai unless CJ grabs it first. Maybe. They could take the Hecarim away from Kuve as well, too, if they thought that was more of a threat. Shy has played quite a bit of Hecarim, but he, he hasn't been the best Hecarim we've seen in the league. His flanks have not been stellar. I think CJ is 3-7 and seven when playing Hecarim. They really have a bad record, yeah. and the last time they played it was against Jin Air, and they totally could not, they totally failed to get the engages on the flanks. That's not really Shy's specialty as a player. And so I would be concerned. They should take the Rek'Sai oh, okay. here. Absolutely. Take it away from Samsung, because otherwise that is a very dangerous pick. And they will. So two picks over to Samsung. We'll see if they do decide to grab that Corky in the first rotation or not. I really don't like it when Samsung gets the Corky early. Alistar's available, too. I feel like you got to pick that. Yeah, they will pick Alistar. The question is, what else are they going to grab here? Alistar Lucian would be very strong option. Bard as well, I suppose. <laughs> I don't know if Bard's uh, worthy of a pick this early on. You I, you should take the, oh, they take the Shen early. Wow. Very interesting. <laughs> Taking the Shen away from Shy. And again, Shen did get these little buffs and Shy is laughing about it. He's like, okay, really guys? <laughs> Come on, I'm the only Shen player in this league. Well, I wonder I, how Shivana does I mean, it Shen. is, it is. The buffs were landed this week in Korea on 5.11. Yeah. So we've only had a couple days and Shy obviously seeing that power of Shen early on and being an early adopter, but that doesn't mean that no one else is playing it. And clearly, Kuve feels confident. And a lot of those changes that were made, particularly the, the magic resist change and the, the change to his passive means that he's a lot more durable naturally with the MR and he can split push a lot better with the Trinity Force because he gets more procs on his passive, which means he's much more of a threat in terms of quickly taking down towers in a split. Well, the Azir would not be a big surprise. Coco did play it both games in their last match. Did quite well on it. And looks like they'll go with that and the Corky for space. Azir's just such a safe blue side pick. Uh, now Crown may play that Zed that we've seen him play it before, but I'm not sure he's gonna do that. Really interesting that Alistair has fallen so far down this draft. It's probably the first time we've seen Alistair go this far down in some time. It is I, a little bit odd. Especially since CJ got Corky even after they saw that Sivir was already selected by Samsung. So there's no need to take the Corky that early on. It could have just been Alistair Azir. CJ may have a special trick in store, however. We'll see what he does. Certainly could. And it might be that Evelyn to go with the Alistar as well, too. Yeah. Eve on Eve. It's finally <laughs> happening. <laughs> CJ has the Rek'Sai, so that Evelyn just not going to be quite as effective. With the Nidalee ban, there aren't quite as many options as usual for Eve. I mean, we've seen people have success with it against the Rek'Sai anyway, but it does make it a little bit tougher. And they're going to go with that and the Nautilus for Luna this game. Madlife may be going back to that Thresh that he played so much in the early parts of the season. Where is the Alistair and why is it not being taken? Uh, it's it'd a be, bit odd. It would be perfect for CJ because they've got good poke as it is, but they need some sort of some sort of primary engage. And they could get it from their top laner, absolutely. Shy has switched over to Teleport Ignite, which implies that it will be Hecarim. But we'll have to wait and see. And that makes you wonder if he's better at playing it now than he was in recent history. <laughs> well, I mean, 
I saw him on it recently and I wasn't impressed. They just continually failed to get the flank and you, you have to go for that flank, that's it. So Alistair Hecarim would give them lots of engage options. But they're gonna go for pick with the Thresh instead. So this means that the Hecarim is now the only engage choice. Hmm. And given Shy's previous Hecarim play, that does not fill me with confidence, Stella. This almost seems like a very CJ thing to do, though. This is a composition where I feel like you could turn a fight around. You know, you're the one who gets engaged on, and then you turn it around. Then you hecker him over their team. Then you have the box down to protect your cork here in your ear. So I feel like this kind of fits into CJ's strategy of, well, we're just going to kind of see what happens in the early game and then come back with team fighting later. The problem with that is that Evelyn with Shen ulting her instantly into your Corky and Azir <laughs> is not something that they're going to be able to peel that's, with a Thresh. That's a good point. That's a good point. Uh, so that that gives me worry. I really like Samsung's comp here. We have the return of the Shen Evelyn combo, which has been a League of Legends staple when both of these champions are in meta. It's always fun to see how the flanks exactly work with that. Of course, Evelyn gets a massive shield from Agony's Embrace and the Shen ultimate. It's going to be Victor for Crown. Champion that he's he's actually struggled on. It hasn't been one of their one of his best. Maybe looking to turn that performance around tonight. But I really like Samsung's composition. They've got great lockdown, lots of crowd control, really good engage with the Eve Chen combo if they can execute it properly. And CJ is going to be very reliant on Shy to engage. Although they have the they have the better poke by a little bit. It's not not by a lot by by a little bit. Uh, so. I, I I just worry that this this is not something that CJ has shown themselves capable of competently operating in the past. Well, it's no top fizz, but we'll see what they can we'll see what they can pull off oh, with this one. No, don't remind <laughs> me of Shy's fizz. I don't know if Shy's Hecarim really is going to make you feel much better. Uh, it does actually, and that a says bit, a lot. A little bit. <laughs> it I does wonder. actually. Well, Shy just looking for another opportunity to prove himself because, again, you know, he was not finding the angles to come in on that you need to with that Hecarim. Yeah, he is 3-7. and seven. I just looked it up. 3-7 and seven yep. all time on that champion. Working towards that 50% slowly. Well, I'm glad to see Madlife back on that Thresh, though, too. He did really well on it earlier in the season. Madlife continuing to be pretty flexible with those support picks. Still, this is the only time we've seen Alistair fall through pick and ban. Very interesting, unusual scenario. Well, we'll see who takes game number one, CJ versus Samsung. It's time to get in the game and find out. And welcome to Summoner's Rift. CJ Entis versus Samsung here on our first match of the day on this lovely but extremely humid Friday in Seoul. <laughs> At least it's not too hot today, though. Yeah, we got that going for us. That is true. I can take one or the other, but not both. <laughs> I would prefer it just to be not humid. I don't care what the temperature is. I just want it to be not humid. Well, you should move to Colorado where I grew up. Sounds Zero percent humidity. Yeah, Minnesota wasn't so bad, man. We had like a week or two of humidity, but it was usually pretty dry. Well, you had, see, got to go to a, you know, a desert, <laughs> Los Angeles. Maybe you should move there. I don't know about that. I want to go. I don't want to go that far. <laughs> I know Los yeah. Angeles is. Um, you know, there are some things worse than humidity. Yeah, you know, I love. <laughs> I love clean air. That's why I live in Seoul. <laughs> yep. That's oh. a big priority for me. You know. <laughs> well, pretty passive start here. Oh hi. Hello. So. Uh, it looks like no real shenanigans going down to level one. Yeah, shenanigans? What are you talking about? He's right on. He's right in front of you, Monty. <laughs> Simmer down there. You just shush me. <laughs> and I'll do it again. <laughs> How dare you? You can't do that. You can't shush me. It doesn't work. Calm down. Calm down. It's clearly not affecting anything. <laughs> so. Uh, Looks like actually Fury and Luna are going to take the Gromp. This isn't something that happens in Korea very often, but they want to get that big, big advantage. Will Luna take the Soul XP is the question. Sometimes you do this on a Nautilus if you want to invade early, but nope, going to share it. 
So they're just going to heal up off of pots instead. And now they will have that early advantage. Of course, CJ's going to know this when they see Luna's HP bar. Oh, yeah. So yeah they they'll know exactly what's up. But how are they going to respond right now? Just try. Oh, missed Oops. the C. Missed the CS with the phosphorus bomb. How sad for space. Wah, wah. And oh, actually, wow. shy going boots. So not buying anything besides the flask, and then wanting to go for the early boots. Yeah, once that, that lane. Wants that fast home guard, I suppose. Yeah. Well, I mean, he, he doesn't use it well. So. <laughs> hey and man. That's, that's the thing about the thing about shy's yeah. hecarim. Is he? It's not that he's bad in lane. It's that when it comes to coordinating with the rest of his team, on champions like Shen, he's very good at it. On champions like Hecarim, he just can't find the flank, can't find the back line. And Victor is very vulnerable to flanks, so he definitely will have opportunities in this game. Sivir, not so much, but Hec uh, but the Victor, yes. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Unless it's Praise Draven, then never, <laughs> never try again. But Shy Hecarim, give it, a, give it another try. Give it a shot. We'll see if he can lower that win rate to under thirty <laughs> percent. That'd be that'd be pretty impressive. I mean, for a, a player like Shy, who is a good top laner, he's legitimately good to have such a low win rate on a champion like that. It's like NAR two point for this guy. <laughs> I actually think his NAR win rate is higher. Should be, yeah. <laughs> but he, you know, it's similar in that he just didn't want to play it. Then when he did, he was bad on it. Oh, not, no. Not, not quite this I bad. lied. He's 0-2 on NAR. But he's also only played two games as opposed to 10. So there's that aspect of it as well. It's true. He gave up on that one. Never even made it to uh, third times the charm, I guess. Well, we haven't really seen much NAR recently. Uh, been kind of shut out of the meta by a variety of other carry top laners or just more, more champions that are threatening to the back line. True enough. We'll see how this mid lane goes as well, too. Crown, like we mentioned, didn't have the strongest showing on Victor last time out. He'll have a little bit of time to passively farm up this game, though. He's not getting Zed played into him, so. Yeah, that helps, too. <laughs> That's a big positive. Ambition really not making any moves on the map quite yet. Uh, of course, not too many kill options. He's going to need six on Coco before they make a play onto the Victor, but. That is something that CJ's been doing really well, is the synergy between Coco and Ambition when Coco is playing this Azir. Because Coco really doesn't have a lot of fear about going in for the kill against a, a champion like Victor. Victor with a double, the double mobility summoners this time, so he will be a little bit harder to, to lock down. You know what finds, you know what surprises me a bit? Is you remember Hojin, of course, from the Ku Tigers, we'll see him later today. He used to be named Lee. Uh -huh. But he changed his name, apparently, because it was too close to Lee Sin. Uh -huh. Yet, here we have Eve <laughs> on Samsung. Don't ask me for logic. I don't, I don't know. I don't get <laughs> it, man. Where do you draw the line? Uh, this is just a big farm fest right now. Yeah, pretty much. I'm actually quite surprised. Ambition just moving through the enemy jungle, getting some of those deep wards down right on the camps. And trying to keep an eye on where Eve is going to be in the jungle, but there's not a whole lot that he's going to see quite yet, especially the trinket ward on the blue buff going to go down very early. Hmm. Yeah, not a lot going on. There's a lot of farming. Coco has managed to freeze the lane a little bit closer to him. And Eve stealthily collapsing tunnels. Can you really stealthily yeah. collapse a tunnel? <laughs> I don't know if it quite works like that. Are <laughs> well, they going to find the pink ward? Yeah, they knew it was there. They pinged it out earlier, so yeah. that's why Mad Life is there, just to back him up while he gets those hits down and takes it out. So good planning right there, even Luna. Going to take adequate precautions or heading back into the jungle. That ward on the blue buff going to expire right before the blue buff comes up, though. So he's still going to be seen at his wolves, however. They have good eyes on him, and now they're going to know exactly where Ambition's Rek'Sai is, too, at the same time. So this is a pretty no Whoa. quantity. Shy actually going in. Yeah, Onslaught of Shadows onto Kuve, but Kuve not even needing to burn that flash. Shy just pushing him back. Guess he just wants a little bit of time to throw out a ward and hang out a bit. Trying to push Kuve out of lane, but I think it's going to take a little bit more than that. So the new, I'm curious if Kuve is going to mimic Shy's Shen build. 
So that was Sunfire Cape. Of course, you need that to get more wave clear onto Shen to put pressure down. And then you move into the Cowl and then a Phage, or Phage then Cowl, depending on how you're feeling in your lane. And then you build the Trinity Force after that. And the Trinity Force, people may say, well, you know, why is that really necessary on Shen? You just need to do more damage on this champion. And he, ha he can throw out swords quite frequently to get that Trinity Force Sheen proc up. But otherwise, you're just not that useful. Uh, building full tank on Shen, which is what we've seen a lot of LCS players do this past week, really doesn't provide much because, great, you're impossible to kill, but you also, after your taunt is down, present zero threat to the enemy team. There's no more CC you're able to do. There's really nothing at all. So balancing out his innate tankiness, which he got more of with the magic resist buffs. Yeah, also uh, uh, gets his passive a little bit quicker as well, too. Yeah, I mean, it, it, that's so, what makes the T Force really nice. Uh, yeah, his, his general damage output was increased, but I think you just need something on Shen because otherwise, he, uh, like I said, as, as his taunt is gone, you might as well just ignore him until his taunt comes off cooldown again. Well, Luna and Fury clearing out the ward, making way for Eve, but no, Eve not coming all the way down the river. He turns around and goes back to the blue. Looks like they're going to hand that over to Crown. But again, just a very passive game early on. But Ambition is level 6, Coco is level 7 now, so maybe we're going to start to see a little bit more action once Crown comes back in the mid lane. Yeah, but that has to be very well coordinated. I'm actually really surprised that both teams wanting to farm up so heavily. Of course, CJ... They have more of an item power spike with Corky and Hecarim. Samsung, a little bit more freedom in terms of when and how they can fight. So they may want to look into that, getting a dragon earlier as a result because they are less dependent. I mean, CJ has kind of always been the type of team, too, that likes to wait for their opponent to make a mistake. And against a team like Samsung, you're probably going to find that, you know? Well, I mean, Samsung, they've been playing well so far. Their warding has been really good around this dragon. and. They, uh, they've really kept, especially those two pink wards now, in the bottom side of the river. Oh CJ. Mad Life and Ambition coming up top. Shy just trying to keep Kuve occupied until they get there. There is a ward. Ambition comes through. They're going to scan it. Are they still going to dive this? Meanwhile, Samsung responds with the dragon. They're like, all right, well, if we're going to lose our top laner, we're going to get the dragon for it. And they're going to go in onto Kuve. There's the smite as well. Onslaught of Shadows comes through. Mad Life hits him with the death sentence. There's a taunt on the Mad Life. Ambition tanking the turret well, though. And first blood going to Shy Dragon, though, taken by Samsung. That was an excellent tower dive from CJ. They just chained their CC so well, yeah. starting with the Chilling Smite into the knockup, into the, the Onslaught of Shadows, and then Mad Life just grabbing him with a hook. There was almost nothing that Kuve could do. And because Ambition started out all that and began tanking the turret, uh, there was no threat of the turret switching aggro to a lower health target once the taunt came through. So that was a really nice tower dive from CJ. Very well executed. Yeah, they got trade turrets too. Yeah, it, it, that said, it wasn't really worth it. I mean, we look at it turret for turret, but they got the dragon, dragon for a kill, definitely in favor of Samsung. And CJ, CJ knows though, they're just waiting to hit that power spike. They're waiting to get their items. So they're gonna be fine with that uh, overall. CJ just doesn't pick themselves into compositions that have to be too worried with the early game most times, it seems like. Yeah, I mean, they're going to be fine later on in the game, so it's not the biggest deal in the world for them to make that decision in the early stages here. Especially now, because they have the leisure of simply continuing to push with this Hecarim farm up, and then once Corky gets the Trinity Force, he's going to have a lot of freedom on the map, because that will probably be before the turret actually or the dragon actually respawns, and that means that really space can group up and start pushing down more towers, even in the in the mid or the top side. CJ really putting a lot of pressure on that mid lane turret too now. Not quite able to take it out, but they did do a lot of damage. And yeah, that's, uh, that's exactly where they need to be. Just wait for their timing, see if they can get some siege done in the interim. And here comes Corky right into the mid lane. Yep, that's right. A little early, he actually. Yeah, he doesn't have that Trinity Force yet, so I don't know Sheen, how which effective is, he's going to be. Do you think that's enough? Yeah, it is It is enough. And he can't farm anywhere else right now. Yeah, uh, he doesn't want to overextend into the bottom side. 
by himself. Right, Juve already starting to do a little bit of split pushing, it looks like. Doesn't quite have that Sunfire, Sunfire Cloak yet, but he's got to be pretty close by now. Yeah, he'll get it on his next back. He's just trying to take the waves where he can. Fury actually daring to push forward right now, but notice that Eve is right there for the backup. Going to be coming into the lane. Uh, there are pings on Eve, but I don't know if they saw Eve. They may have seen Eve at the Krugs, actually. So they have an idea that there is sufficient backup. Will they go for it anyway, however? Kuve has ultimate and teleport available. Yeah, Ambition looking to come over the wall as well. Looking to back off. Wow, Ambition goes through anyway. And CJ is just going to chase Samsung back a little bit. Yeah, I like that. Coco covering CJ well. They have they had that idea of where Eve was, making sure that they were going to have a ban up if something hairy went down in the top lane. And that just keeps them farming. So very defensive posturing from CJ here, but they are, they're just hedging their bets. And you can tell the way that CJ's positioning on the map is as, so they can always get the better team fight should one erupt yep. at that time. Seems very CJ of them. I do love the team fighting. Yeah, in the meanwhile, anything else going pretty normally. Nice little CS lead for Fury here. But not a whole lot that Space needs to worry about quite yet. No, Space is just happy to farm up right now. He just wants that Trinity Force. They don't have to push any objectives until he gets it. Uh, he can go right into the mid lane if he wants, send someone else up top just to clear the wave. CJ's been doing a good job this game, too, of controlling the Scuttle Crab as well. They've been having nearly all of them so far this game. All right, there's the Trinity Force, and that's going to mean that Actually, Space going into the top side. Fury getting a lot of damage down onto the turret right now because no one was there to cover. Wow. I wonder if he's actually going to take this. And uh, they're going to send three people top just to beat down the turret. That is a bit of a mistake from CJ. Yeah, can CJ get the bottom or a kill or something? There's a chilling smite onto Kube. Kube flashes, still gets hit by that onslaught of shadows, pulled in by the death sentence. Fox goes down, they commit a lot to it, but they do get the kill. Now they really need to get this turret as well, otherwise it's going to be one kill for another objective, and that just is not something you can do all game long. Yeah, they they're gonna get the turret as well. They've got a minion wave there stationed. So nice dive there by CJ Madlife with the flash flay into the hook, just to make sure that it was secure. Kube was trying to get out. He was playing intelligently, but there were just too many people, and when they committed multiple summoners to that kill, it just was a little bit too much for him. So CJ just again a slight advantage out of that situation. Uh, they've gained a, a mild gold lead here so far by about 1,500. Uh, a lot of that coming from the CS differential with Shy in the top lane as well as the two kills. Yeah, they've kept the turrets even at least. They really could use this next dragon that comes up in 30. But if both of these teams just kind of continuing going or continue going even until the late game. This is gonna... CJ's time to shine though. Yeah. Two Trinity forces completed. That C that CS lead just put them over the edge in terms of getting that onto Hecarim right now. So this is their time to shine. They need to take this dragon. Well, up in 10 seconds, they have a decent amount of vision nearby, but they could use a bit more positioning. Shy just trying to chase Kube out of lane for the moment anyway. Yep, uh, and Samsung able to muscle their way into the river for now. Yeah, you always have those sand soldiers, though, to safely clear wards if you're Coco. CJ should have the positioning. They should have the poke. They just want to push out the bottom lane before they actually commit to that. But Chai, really the bully in the top side right now, able to keep control over that minion wave and make sure that it's nice and close to Samsung's tier two. So there's constantly that threat going in. Yep. They're going to try to make a pick on the Looney here. Oh, no, pulling back Ambition with the Lantern. A little bit too dangerous to go for that one, I guess. Yeah, they still need to wait. Now they have the waves in their favor, and Hecarim is going to be able to recall, and Samsung is going to have a high amount of threat here on this Dragon, as he probably... He's not going to pick up the Home Guard enchantment, so he's just going to go back. Hmm. 
sure he, I mean, he maybe wanted to get the home guard if he had the money, which he almost certainly did. I would think so, yeah. I mean, he did pick up the Ruby, Ruby Crystal, didn't he? CJ going for the dragon anyway. And here comes Samsung. They may try for this one. Luno walking up, and it looks like it still is taken by CJ. CJ may want to fight this too. Kube taking a lot of damage after coming in with his ultimate. Nice knock up on the Shy. Shy having to ult to stay away in that Chaos Storm, pushing most of CJ back. So Samsung doesn't lose anybody, but they don't come away with the dragon. CJ thinking about chasing this one down, but I think the health is a little bit too low. They're going to have a hard enough time saving this mid lane turret. Well, are oh. they going to go in on this, though, is the question. They're I don't know. starting to go. Someone? There's the Ember's Life 1 on play. Knocking nearly everyone back under turret. Fury, though, the first person to pick up the kill, but a double in response from space on that Corky CJ. Able to get a little bit of revenge there and still saving their turret. Wow, what a great play from Coco. His Azir is getting so good. That was amazing. That was like a four, <laughs> was like a four man Emperor's Divide <laughs> push under turret. That was amazing. <laughs> uh, I definitely didn't expect that. Well, Shy, guess what? You don't have to engage if Coco's playing Azir. I take it back. You don't need Hecarim to do anything. Well, uh, that's perfect because that's exactly what Shy <laughs> does on Hecarim. So this works well. Oh. Good call, CJ. Whoa. I just need, because that was a flash. Basically, I'm just trying to figure out how he actually managed to do that. I want to see the replay. Because he put the Sand Soldier down. The margin for error was no doubt very, very low. CJ even comes back and takes his mid lane turret. And suddenly, CJ doing CJ things. They find that opportunity. CJ is such a reactive team, it seems like, lately. They want well, you to make a little bit of a mistake. Then they just jump all over you. Well, it wasn't even a mistake. Samsung was doing the right thing by just turning. They had enough of HP that under a reasonable circumstance, they could have just grouped in that mid lane and tried to take out the mid tower. They didn't Instead, account for the unreasonably <laughs> good Azir play. They didn't, yes, they didn't account for Coco coming through Raptor Pit <laughs> and knocking four of them into the tower like that. That was super good. I don't know why we haven't seen the replay yet. I want to see the replay. I'm really that. upset that we haven't seen the replay yet. I mean, what's going on here that we really vitally need to watch? Oh, it looks like Samsung may take this mid lane turret. Yep, they will. All right, there. Now we can see the replay, right? Maybe. Maybe not. Now I'm sad. Aw, me too. It's okay. We'll see it when Coco wins MVP. If you don't sabotage <laughs> the vote with Mad Life again. I'm so <laughs> I, well, I am not sorry for that. Not one bit. I helped give Mad Life an MVP for his Bard game. I am. I went to bed satisfied and proud of my actions that night. <laughs> but I think Coco could definitely be a, definitely be a good candidate for MVP so far this game. Nice CS lead actually for Shy on the second room, but he has pretty much been farming all game. It's what he does. Yep. You gotta do when you're when you're Hecker. I'm just go for it, farm up, get to those big items, and then dumpster the back line. True enough. Space just pushing up the bot lane as much as he possibly can. The Shen pick for Kuve not working out too terribly well. He's 0 3 1 on the champion right now and came in once with his ultimate, didn't really get a good taunt off afterwards. And well, a lot of that was Samsung's fight on the dragon. Eve was not flanking. I mean, you have to get the Eve into the back line in order to be really effective. Hmm. And it just didn't happen. And sure, there are barriers to getting Eve back there, the Emperor's Divide, but Coco's also. I mean, in his last three games that he's been playing Azir, he has not been using Emperor's Divide in a very defensive manner. He's no. an all-in Azir player. It's very fun to watch. Oh, Fury able to push Shy off the turret, but not before Shy does about half health damage to it. Yeah, CJ really starting to put a lot of pressure on the map in general right now. Despite being even three turrets to three turrets, CJ with a lot better vision, a lot better pressure. It's interesting because if you look at where everybody is on the map right now, it doesn't look like a three turrets to three turrets game, does it? <laughs> Looks like a three to one in favor of CJ or something like that. Yeah, I, I mean, that's just the, the power of the ward line that CJ's established. They have the forward vision, whereas Samsung's playing in a more reactionary fashion. And they're unable to put out because CJ's putting such even pressure on the map, particularly on the side waves, and Shy's just gonna sit here and... He's gonna get the turret, I think. 
Auto attack the turret for free. Kube's not going to stop him. Wow, yeah. Easy turret taken by Shy. Looks like they'll just go back and buy. One minute until that dragon. CJ looking to take their second, as is Samsung. And is Samsung in a position here where they can fight this? Does it all just, if they don't get the flank with Eve, they don't get the fight? Or is it even too they, dangerous at this point? Now? They have to kill Coco and Space mm. very early on in this fight. I think if this game goes for a long time, we'll probably even out in terms of threat, obviously. The Hecker, I'm going to be a little bit more threatening than the Shen in the late game. Azirin and Victor, both very big late game carries. And then maybe the, oh, as we oh. see so Ambition going in. Ember Survive pushes Fury out of it. They separated the AD carry. Mad Life trying to make plays here. They do grab Coco. They take him down. Luna with the kill there. Fury in the back lines by himself. And look at that. Three kills already for Samsung. Crown on the run right now. They've lost Fury, but they're still going in. Shy getting low health. Space relatively untouched, but he doesn't really have a lot of people to keep him safe right now. They've got to be so careful here. Kube, though, looks to be an easy target as he has to try to taunt away. That fight ended up being a one for three so far. Shy really wants to go in on this. Well, Luna getting a little bit low. Got a little bit too close to that Hecarim. And Shy has the Trinity Our, Force. Uh, he is doing damage. You have to respect that double Trinity Force damage Seriously. right there. Kuve is tanky enough to handle it. Luna getting a bit too close right now. And considering that he doesn't really have any tank items, he's going for the Forbidden Idol next. That is not going to be a pretty picture. And you know what's funny is in spite of the fact that Samsung won that fight, they're actually, CJ's the one doing the dragon right now because two of Samsung's members had zero HP. Yeah, they'll get the dragon okay. too. Shy coming in with the teleport, runs right into Crown and takes him out. Kube getting knocked up by Ambition. That's gonna be another kill as Ambition finishes him off with a bit of help from the Phosphorus Bomb on Corky. And now CJ is pretty much taking firm control of this game. Yeah, that, it's it's so bizarre how CJ is able to turn situations like that around. I mean, that was a two for three fight in favor of Samsung, yet CJ gets the dragon, comes back, gets more kills, and now has this pressure in mid lane. They do need to worry about top lane, though. It is looking pretty good for Samsung at the moment. It's looking pretty good for Hecarim's farm score, <laughs> I think you mean. <laughs> No damage on the turret yet, only starting right now, so that'll be easy to helicopter his way through, pick up a lot of those CS, and then move it right back the other direction while well, they can start to put a lot of pressure down onto the Baron. This Baron will go down very, very quickly to double Trinity Forest, Blade of the Ruined King, plus Azir, auto attacks. And Should. Yeah, that was a... Oh, so there's blue buff taken by Coco. It's a very funny fight because so many of Samsung's members got chunked but didn't die, so a little bit poor target selection and finish from CJ right there, but because two of their biggest threats and actually the two threats in their power spikes right now are well, were managed to stay alive and there was no more damage left over from Samsung, they couldn't actually finish that off and CJ's the one who quite easily takes the dragon. It was impressive too, just how like untouched space was in that fight. You know, for yes. kind of being in the middle of it a little bit, came out of that with full health. Oh, meanwhile, I guess space just decides to kill Kuve. Mad Life was there to help. Ah, uh, yes. So no Baron for Samsung now. Kuve looks like he tried to ult out of that, but ended up dying anyway. Probably got CC'd of it by Mad Life during it. I think he started his he started his ult and then didn't realize that Mad Life was coming in. I bet he was in try and trying to ult. If that's what happened. Nice Who knows, because apparently we don't do replays in this game. <laughs> you will never see it again, I, Noah. I guess not. I had to enjoy it while it lasts. CJ enjoying taking out that mid lane turret right now. Five to three and make that six to three as Space takes out the tier two at bottom. So all of the tier two is down now. Only the inhibitor turrets remaining for CJ between them and starting on the Nexus. Yep, a Zero turret left behind on that siege, just propped up to cover their rears, and that does foil any kind of Evelyn Shen flank that would go down. And CJ, you know, they played a very methodical game. That's been very textbook so far, except for that wacky engage. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah. 
So Kuve actually just gets flayed out of his taunt. Oh, he tried to ult there. Ooh, that doesn't seem like the best idea. Well, he almost made it. Actually. There was no, there was no CC yeah. left over, so you it might as close. well try to get out of that situation without dying. But yeah, this Shen has been left a lot to, desi to be desired, and you know he's going full tank. So basically now he's not going to do anything at all ever in this game. I really don't like full tank Shen. It's like he has a port, an extra port, and an extra ability, but without any kind of damage threat, you run into situations like we saw before where he's just running away from Corky and Hecarim even though it's like a 3v2. <laughs> yeah, well, we saw Shy kind of chuckle a little bit when uh, Samsung locked this one in. And I think Shy is, Shy's status in this tournament is the only Shen player really really hasn't been threatened too much yet. <laughs> this is my opinion about, about this Shen. So if you build full tank Shen and he's not going to be a damage threat at all, Except, why are you picking him? Okay, well, you're picking him because he has a taunt, but probably you're picking him for double globals, right? So you can get that 5v4. But if you have a 5v4, why would you need a massive tank there instead of somebody who does damage to take them out quicker? So it's like, it conceptually just doesn't make sense. Yeah, fair question. In the end, in this game, it doesn't really matter. But I think we are seeing a big difference between the two. Well, double pink ward will be double cleared by CJ. They'll grab the third one in there as well. And CJ's warding has been really good this game. Samsung has been a little bit behind on that. Now CJ going for this Baron, and it's pretty safe too. Samsung knows it's happening. We'll play it so into fast. They took it out, and now the fight happens. Fox goes down to zone. Looney gets pulled in with that death sentence. And look at this Shy getting way in the back lines on top of everybody. They're going to kill the support. And then CJ has to kite back, getting away from that Chaos Storm. Samsung may have an opportunity here. No Emperor's Divide pushes people back. Can Ambition do enough? Space Coco trying to poke a little bit. Coco flashes ahead, picks up the kill on the crown. And now CJ can start chasing yet again. Coco, wow. Tries to go back in again. Fury taken out extremely quickly. Look at Coco go on this Azir. This is one of the best Azir games I've ever seen. No <laughs> uh, kidding. That if was a really good turnaround from Coco, holding onto that ultimate, baiting them into the chase, and then turning the tables nearly instantly. I really hope we get it a replay of that one at the very least because sorry the technology just is oh never mind <laughs> all right so here we go mad life just gonna zone right there eve gets the channel jen appears and let's just watch coco here so he gets he gets stared up by luna makes sense and you know shy dies early as they focus him in the back line so it's pretty bad trade so far but here's coco chunks down eve with that emperor's divide and look at this he left just a little bit of a hole to, and they all find themselves in a choke getting Autoed by the Sand Soldiers, but here you go, moving forward, gets the flash down at the end, and you think, well, he might be in trouble. Well, guess again, that burst from the Corky takes out Fury right there. And now CJ going right for this third dragon as well. I love the positioning of that Emperor's Divide because it gave the other team hope that they could actually get around the wall to pursue and finish the kill. But then he just stuffed it with sand soldiers and they took a billion damage trying to go through there. It was very clever. Yeah. I remember Froggen saying that he used to do that as well, playing Anivia, that the, the key to playing Anivia was not to completely wall off chokes, but to just make them line up single file in that choke point and then crush them as they tried to walk through. Makes sense. Oh, a grab onto Eve. Can they finish him off? No, doing about half damage, pretty close. And now. CJ has this Baron. They have that third dragon. They can pressure these turrets quite a bit. Minion wave almost there in the bot lane. Well, without crown there, they're going to take out this turret extremely fast. Luna gets grabbed again. Goodbye. And CJ should be cruising to a pretty easy inhibitor here. Even if you're the only ones defending the bot lane at the moment, there it goes. And CJ can just casually stroll away. Kube showing that he does not understand the way of the ninja. Yeah, I would say so. Although you're supposed to play Shen, not role play Shen. We know Shen <laughs> doesn't know the way of the ninja. It's true. But we know. We are in control of Shen. Maybe not in the lore, but in real life. <laughs> well, this, this siege is just so brutal. Two Trinity forces in it is here. Gonna take out those turrets in a jiffy. Yep, and now. Much. 
Will they actually get another inhibitor here? I think they should back off. Baron buffs off. They uh, they they got enough. No need to be greedy. Go back, purchase some more items, make sure that you lock down this win without question. Yeah, they're 10k, a whole, 10K gold ahead right now. And that's plenty. No need to push it any farther than you need to. Especially because Samsung does have that ability to once in a while have kind of that miracle team fight where they can sort of scrap it out, you know? Well, it's not that they haven't been team fighting that well this game. I think that last team fight went well for the most part yeah. until they got baited into the choke. If, if you think about it, if they had just left after Azir put down the Emperor's Divide, they may have been able to rush mid or something like that and take something in response for the Baron, but they got baited into that situation where they ended up experiencing more losses instead of just letting it go. Well, it's too late now. A little bit of extra aggression where it wasn't needed, and Samsung finds themselves on the verge of losing game one. Almost certainly. So now I wonder, are we going to see a Shy play the, the Manor Shen next game, right? Because I don't <laughs> think Kube is going to do it. Shy, you know, Shy's the type of player where he's like, all right, I'll, I'll, man I'll Manor Shen here. I'll show you how it's done. I like the, f the phrase Manor Shen because it, it, Shen <laughs> is just such a derpy ninja that you do kind of, it is kind of <laughs> shameful to get beaten by him. I mean, it's very Manor of Shen to announce when he's showing up too, you know? <laughs> Manor Ninja. Very polite. He just knocks on the door. He's like, excuse me, could I? I've been sent to assassinate you. Would you mind if I, I came in and, you know, assassinated you? No? Oh, well, all right. I'll try later. I'll come through the window in about an hour. So, uh... If you can leave it open for look, me, look that'd for be me, great. Yeah. If you leave it unlocked, it'll make things much easier, please. No? All right, well... I'll be cutting through your roof in approximately 45 minutes then. You might, if you notice the sword coming through, just watch out. It's going to come right through. After I'm through, I'll assassinate you. But just be careful first. Very polite guy, that Shen. Keep trying to come in, and nope, sand soldiers everywhere. Drops the ult anyway. Luna gets grabbed. CC before he can come in. Eve tries to go deep, gets focused immediately. Shy jumping to the back line. Spears crown right into space. Space taking some damage from that Chaos Storm, but should be able to survive it. Kuve getting very low. Samsung everybody low. There's the Emperor's Divide. Coco comes in to help Space claim another kill. How does, how does Coco always get in there? How does he always get out, too? That's, that's, that's the other big question. <laughs> he didn't question. even have flash when he went in because he burned it at the very start of the fight when Eve was starting to charge him down. And I think what I've learned, Noah, about watching these two teams is that no one knows how to flank here. Eve will not flank <laughs> with the Shen ult. He just True. tries to run straight at you, and that means that Coco just flashes away, and then you never actually deal any damage to him. And CJ, we've seen that they have trouble with the flank as well. Now, shy has been doing great, actually, at getting on to Crown in this game from the front, but he'd be doing a lot more if he didn't have to ult into the back line, if he could just run in from the side and then ult later in the fight once everybody starts to cluster up in the team fight. It is kind of funny watching shy approach these. He just kind of, like, walks into the fight, and he's like, excuse me, where's your AD care? Oh, there it is? All right, I'll ult that way. That's where I'm going. Ambition finding Eve in the jungle here. Shy is a, a very a very predictable alt pattern with this. Uh, I don't know why Shy it. needs Guardian Angel this game. <laughs> Just in case, you know. Gotta stay in that back line, right? Whatever. I guess we need another Baron to finish this one, too. The three inhibitors yep. down and the massive super minion waves aren't enough. Gotta stretch that gold lead. Gotta pad those stats. That's right. Looking good. Next time they have that stat where it shows Barons per game, CJ's is going to be a tiny bit higher. Yep, and there is the retreat turret just to cover their rear, and now the final push begins. Maybe they can get some more kills, pad their stats in that fashion as well. Why not? Super minions coming in every single lane right now. CJ taking out this inhibitor and bot once again as soon as it responds. Here we go, Eve coming in, gets a three-man ult. Mad Life drops the box immediately. Luna trying to come from the side, doesn't really work. Shy still waiting to use that ult. Nope, now he just did, there we go. And yeah, that's gonna be a dead Shen. Kuve out of the way. Space gets a kill there. And Shy, it will just kind of cause havoc in the back lines, because why not? Crown, surprisingly not doing a whole lot of damage. Maybe just enough to take out Ambition, or not. 
he's still alive. Shy, oh, there, that's why he bought the Guardian Angel. <laughs> now we know. Got that turret because of it. CJ getting chunked out quite a bit in this fight. There we go. Now just running over the rest of Samsung, and his Fury goes down, so does the Nexus. GG, CJ takes game one. Well, very methodical game from CJ right there. Not yeah. too much. Space was 10, 0, and 7 on that Corky. He had a, you know, Coco had a great game, but Space also had a really good game too. Yeah, he did. Looked sharp, but I really liked just the team fighting of that Azir. I thought it was pretty amazing to watch, as well as that one engage was pretty crazy. So. Yeah, Coco's Azir mechanics. That might be something Samsung <laughs> would want to consider banning next game, I believe. Yeah, still, Shy did better on the Hecarim. I'm still not convinced <laughs> that he can actually flank with it, but at least he, he got onto Crown, which was the most important target for him to destroy in that back line. Samsung versus CJ. And will they take that Shy again for Kuve? I kind of doubt it. Okay. Well, Grog is going to be banned once again by Samsung. Apparently, Eve just really doesn't want to play that champion tonight. No priority on it for the first pick. There's the Rise ban. Rise Callista. Why are you banning Shem? <laughs> Dude, those games were so scary. They really weren't. I mean, <laughs> that's the thing about CJ is not that Shy didn't play this Shen well, but rather that the Shen really didn't fit with the composition that CJ was running. There was no way to inject Shen into the back line like you'd normally like to be able to with some heavy engage or some flank. And so CJ got the Shen in there sort of, but it wasn't really the, the biggest factor. Actually, CJ banning Rumble. Considering how many Rumble bans we've seen against CJ this season, it is a bit confusing. There's a Callista ban on Samsung's side. So what is CJ going to try to prevent Samsung from taking? Do you, I guess, I would normally say, do you ban the Alistar? But Alistar didn't even get any consideration at all that last game. That was very weird. Yeah. Uh, first time in a long, long time that we've seen Alistar fall all the way through the pick and ban phase. So what's it going to be? Nidalee. Okay. Not wanting to deal with Eve's Nidalee, it is uh, quite a strong pick for Samsung. But they give up the Rek'Sai, and I question banning the Rumble when you can just take the Rumble in the first round of the second part of the drafting, ban the Rek'Sai, which has been such a problematic pick for Samsung, although less problematic now that they're on the blue side and they can't just flex it as their last pick. Do you maybe take the Azir away here? No. I guess if it's not an MVP Azir, it's if not you're Samsung, name. you definitely <laughs> take the Rek'Sai. It's such a they good will. pick for you. Well, do you take the Azir if you're CJ? I feel like you definitely grab it. Uh, you could. Crown definitely an Azir player as well. Um, the Maokai was banned in the last game, and so hmm. they may just take that early. And this may just show the Maokai priority right here. I guess that a lot of the time we do see Rumbles giving some Maokai some trouble in the laning phase, especially early on. And uh, now that the Rumble is banned, they can't respond. So what exactly is Kuve going to play into the Maokai? He may not have a good option. They take away the Sivir also. Yeah. And so will we see Samsung maybe just grab this Corky later on in the draft? They nope. could take the Corky. They, uh, they could take Lucian now that they see Sivir. That's what I would like to see Samsung do. Hmm. I think they, they take Azir Alistair here and then take Lucian later on. Okay, Azir Alistar it is. And CJ, I feel like Coco could just respond with a victor of his own if he wanted to. He'll probably wait for that mid lane pick until the end. Coco's a good victor player. Yeah. I'm, I wonder if he takes Cassiopeia here, actually. Vic, there's, there's a lot of options. There's definitely a lot of options. I think Madlife's gonna take the Thresh again. Uh, and he's probably gonna be victor or Cassiopeia, depending. Could take the Ani, though. That would give them even more engage than they have already. God, the Blitzcrank would be pretty awesome, but well, the Bard would be awesome, too. He's an MVP on that Bard, you know. <laughs> I wonder why. He's pretty good. Because <laughs> he earned it. That's, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> I like this, Victor, Victor and Bard. The way I said it kind of sounded like a law firm. Victor, Victor, and Bard. <laughs> If you that actually, accident, that actually could be a, a real law firm. It could, yeah. <laughs> and it will be Victor and Bard representing <laughs> CJ's interests. In Summoner's in, Rift. And in the courtroom. Bard, the way Bard's face is right now, it looks like he's yelling, Objection! <laughs> looks very surprised about it, too. I know. What's sustained? <laughs> 
Oh, maybe this Hecarim for Kuve. You know, Shy is so dangerous on it. You gotta keep it away. And the Tristana pickup seems pretty reasonable for Fury. Now, Shy played Bard into Alistair the last time, so there's something about this matchup, or I mean Mad Life. There's something about this matchup that Mad Life really likes. Hmm. So perhaps the, the ability just to harass from range and then keep the sustain up. I mean, it's not it's not a very powerful lane against Bard, but it is safe. Fury, please play Lucian. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you're going to get to see that. I think he's going to play Corky, like he has been quite a bit lately. And Kuve going for that heck rip. Uh, well, Kuve's going to go back to his heck rip. That's been a very common selection for him. Sejuani would give them a lot of engage right here. Uh, saving the jungler till last does make me wonder a hair, Doa, about what they're doing. Are they going to go full China and select the Nocturne? <laughs> Uh, I don't know, man. I mean, they're waiting for it for a long time, but I don't feel like Nocturne is going to be the key here. Looks like they're still deciding, honestly. Yeah, talking over their options right now, it really doesn't matter which jungler they pick in this particular circumstance. Uh, they may be worried just about that Rek'Sai's early pressure, and we could see the Lee Sin come in here. They have plenty of late game power. Could see the Nunu come in as well, though it's not great synergy compared to the Azir AD carry or a double AD carry that we normally see. Yeah, the Blood Boil doesn't work, but do you think he just wants to go in and just make Eve's life miserable? Looks like he'll be trying that. Just the, a lot of counter jungling, perhaps? The nice thing about Nunu is that he's really good against Azir too because um, you know he's going to build that Frozen Heart, and he's got a lot of attack speed slow for a champion like Azir, if he can get back there, which... You'd imagine that it might be a bit a bit difficult, especially uh, against yeah, the composition that Samsung is running, throwing up that big line. So unlikely he's going to be able to get a snowball back there, but maybe he'll provide enough zone threat to be an issue, or maybe he just wants to go hard into the counter jungling early and just try and shut Eve down if possible. So Samsung, can they flank this game? It won't be Eve flanking this time. It will be Kuve on that top lane. Hecker and both of these teams showing lackluster flanking abilities. Really big yeah. problem, actually, if they were to face another team. I think we've seen it be a big problem we for have. both of these teams <laughs> in the past, actually, yeah. We have indeed. But Mad Life, he should have some good presence on Crown with ultimates. I'm hoping we get that better bard game where Mad Life was great with the Q, the Cosmic Binding, not so awesome with the Tempered Fates last time. Uh, sometimes hitting Coco at the wrong time and then getting Coco killed a couple of occasions. <laughs> but he was still the MVP, don't worry about it. Oh, no. yeah, man, it's fun. <laughs> it's all in good fun, you know? <laughs> if Coco wouldn't have gotten himself killed, you know? I mean, it, maybe he could have earned the MVP, too. Mad Life going for his second MVP on this Bard. Exciting stuff for me. <laughs> Samsung versus CJ, game number two. CJ looking to make the 2-0. Samsung trying to tie things up. We'll see if they can do it. The game starts right now. And welcome once again to Summoner's Rift, CJ Entis versus Samsung. And the fans are pumped. Samsung's fans are always excited. They are. They're just not Though they have seen better days, that is true. Yeah. Last year was a good year for Samsung fans. This year, not so much. So. I guess this year's a good fan for, or a good year for Chinese Samsung fans. Because <laughs> <laughs> they got all of Well, them. yeah, that was true until they moved the best jungler of all time into the top lane. Yeah. You know, that happens with good junglers, though, you know? What is it with, like, a history of good junglers being moved into the top lanes? I just, that enrages me. I, I can't even talk about it. I'm just going to get too mad. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's talk about Samsung's cheese brush hide right here. Oh, boy. They're going to see It's a 5v4, right though. By. There are five members. Of, they're looking for them, right? They have no idea. Oh, they found them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they got us. <laughs> wow. Fury gets a deep board in, though. They weren't actually thinking about that once they saw all five members of Samsung, but it was quite amusing. Mm -hmm. Well, CJ able to get some really deep wards down. 
Yeah, and are they going to look for the lane swap here? Looks like we are going to see just the dual lanes going to the bottom side of the map. Of course, that Sivir, you, you think the Sivir Bard would have the advantage pre-6 here, and that Fury and Luna are just going to be mostly looking to farm back and sustain as much as possible. Shy going to get the Gromp. Of course, hitting that level too quickly. Kuve just going to do the Wolves on his own to hit that same level before they going to back off right now. Madlife very aggressively walking into the brush, getting that first Meep auto down. Yeah, well, that first Meep auto does a pretty decent amount of damage when you combine that with Spell Thieves Edge. And you can be pretty liberal with your Qs early on in lane. It's not quite as much of a mana hog as, like, Lulu's Glitter Lance or something like that. Or, uh, or Kha'Zix is W, you know, if you're playing support Kha'Zix. That's the way forward. You can run out of mana pretty fast sometimes if you do that. You can, it's true. Just casting to my area of expertise, Monty. <laughs> Just trying to, trying to contribute. <laughs> Doing a great job there, buddy. Thank great you. job. Thanks. I'll keep working on it. <laughs> All right, I'm very curious what Ambition is going to be doing against this Rek'Sai, because it is obviously more challenging to counter jungle around a Rek'Sai, considering that it can see you when you're there, then adapt the jungle pathing accordingly. Just going to go ahead and take the Scuttle Crab in the bottom side of the map for Eve, and then head up into the jungle to take a look at that bottom side, but not really going to find much of anything right there, making a big loop for nothing. Yep. No camps oh. left. He could come in from behind, though. Ah, the old behind gank. Ah, the old Rek'Sai switcheroo. That's the right. side switcheroo. <laughs> Things going down. Mad Life in space pushed up very far. This There's might cost him at least a summoner or two. a big minion wave. It would be really dangerous to go into all these caster minions. That's a lot of damage. They don't know where Ambition is right now as well, too, which is why we see the recall happening from Eve. Or does it? He's going to come in. Luna, oh, he tries to go for the flash pulverize. Doesn't land it. Space. Trying to get away here, he's still got both of his summoners. Luna getting very, very low, but Madlife backs away. Space in a lot of trouble, takes the magical journey, and he gets out. <laughs> magical journey. <laughs> There's the heal into the magical journey. Luna with the flash pulverized, but Space not even having to use a summoner to avoid that. No. So a bit of a botched gank there. A lot of time wasted by E, but not to mention he's going to lose his blue buff now. As a result, Ambition just takes a stroll in, seeing that... Eve was down at the bottom side, and guess what? Blue buff's still up, so he'll be happy that he fixed that. Yep, this is exactly what Ambition wanted on this Nunu, the ability to go in and just take the opposing team's jungle. Eve getting a little bit of counter jungling done himself, I suppose, too. As Mad Life magically journeys back to lane. I really, I want to see a replay of that, because I want to know how you miss a, a flash pulverize on a Sivir. I don't know how that happens, he, man. I, the spell shield. Oh, okay. That makes sense. It's pretty fast but, reflexes to spell shield something like that. Well, you, I, I didn't catch the beginning of that fight, but because um, I was watching when Rek'Sai was coming in. Scripting. But Scripting. Uh, <laughs> I think uh, that would be my guess as to how that <laughs> unfolded. Certainly could be. Ooh, Fury. Wow, taking a lot of damage. It's long distance, cosmically bound to the wall there. <laughs> like how the binding kind of followed him throughout the through the Valkyrie. And Space and Madlife should be able to push this lane back up in a moment if they want to. Looks like they may. Yep, just equalize in terms of that CS, so side of that one very lengthy attempt at a gank early on. Now, Ambition's going to come down. Now, they saw him right before the ward expires. No oh, flash oh. for Luna, and Luna may be in trouble. There's a snowball to get the slow. He's pretty tanky, though. Yeah, there's not really a follow-up there. He wasn't close enough to anyone to be stunned with the Cosmic Binding. And after that snowball, no real other crowd control coming in to take him out. So that'll be just a, a quick push of the wave, really, to free up CJ and his bottom lane. Shy and Kuve engaged in a very boring top lane right now. Yep. Space and Mad Life, though. Still fighting for positioning in this lane. Space's health, a little bit of a concern, perhaps. Although he's going to be able to gain back plenty of that from the W on Bard and also just Sidoran's Blade as well. So Rek'Sai seen going into the top side. They know Eve is there. Meanwhile, Ambition just going to clear out a pink ward in the mid lane. 
as he looks to harass Crown as he's pushing up. Not really going to get that, though. Eve there, they can't really 2v2 at the moment. Yeah, pretty typical Victor mid lane. and Nunu. Like, they, just Nunu, you can't really fight. He's just there to be tanky and annoying and clear out wards for you. Yeah. Oh, nice binding. Fury against the turret there. Mid lane going about as you would expect. That little CS lead early on for Azir. Oh, who got it? Looks like it was Eve. <laughs> Judging by the eye above his head. Raptor Wars. That's right. Raptor Wars. Sounds like that's going to be the new Jurassic Park movies. <laughs> Maybe. Hopefully it's better than the world was. I'm just never going to see that, so I'll never know. Yeah. I wasn't planning on it, but... You know what, Doa? I, I think that they should just finally make a Jurassic Park movie that has no people in it. It's just dinosaurs versus dinosaurs the entire time. Yeah, but would you have, see? like, the dinosaurs' thought processes be kind of like... No, nope. no. Nope. No? So... I haven't seen Jurassic World, but I understand that they like do something dumb, like make oh, a nice new, binding. like make a new dinosaur that like a super dinosaur that they genetically it's engineer. It's not a dinosaur, Monty. It's a monster. Yeah, whatever. Is that what they do? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Well, so therefore, they create a new dinosaur that can talk. No. And has super hu like just oh. human level intelligence. Oh, no, sure. No, for yeah. Raptor Wars, my movie. Jeez. This, this kind of stay on track. This kind of uh, ties in with Jurassic <laughs> World a little bit. <laughs> so they do that. So they splice yeah. together a human intelligence dinosaur, and then they just leave them on the island, and that's where the dinosaur factions really start to split up, and the raptors so go to war with each other. Really, you're kind of looking to reboot Planet of the Apes <laughs> only with dinosaurs <laughs> instead of apes, huh? Well, obviously that would be much better. That would be way cooler. It's <laughs> yep. Chris Pratt will still be like buddies with all of them. No, no humans. No? Oh, okay. Not even Chris Pratt? Only anthropomorphic dinosaurs. What if Chris Pratt. Maybe, maybe becomes... dinosaurs that ride other dinosaurs into battle? What if. Ooh, that would be really <laughs> kind of physically difficult, I think, to make work. Uh, well, that's why you genetically. God, Doa, you genetically <laughs> engineered the dinosaurs. It's not so that I hard to understand. Like... <laughs> Different hips or something. Yes, like you gotta have like so they can ride. These, they can ride brontosauruses. So the these raptors, wide-hipped velociraptors, yes. <laughs> riding brontosaurus. Yes, <laughs> makes perfect sense to me now. I mean, makes about as much sense as any other Hollywood movie. T Rex still has tiny arms. So like, <laughs> kind of like a running joke, you know. Everybody else has like physical, like enhancements, but nope, T Rex still those tiny little arms. But they can only have technology at, like, the medieval level. Therefore, the raptors could joust on the brontosaurus. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> T-Rex just is, like, holding a tiny crossbow. <laughs> it's like a... Feel free to call me, Hollywood. You're welcome. Hey, sounds plausible to me. I mean... <laughs> oh, meanwhile, it's plausible that Kube is going to get killed here. Tries all the way, makes it out just barely. Wow, I'm surprised he was able to escape from there. Well, Nunu ganks may not be so fearsome. Perhaps Ambition should not be Nunu ganking the top lane and instead should be soloing the dragon. This is a thought, playing to your strengths, you know? Maybe. I have my doubts. <laughs> well, instead, they don't, they fail the gank and give up the dragon, so not so great of a start from CJ. Samsung getting the first dragon for the second game in a row now. What will Mad Life be able to get done in the spot lane? Not a whole lot. Not yet. Nope. Oh, Pulverize under space. A little bit of a combo there, but Luna's going to take some damage. Nice dodge on the binding, though. If that had hit, he would have certainly taken a bit more. Shut up, dude. <laughs> <laughs> what do they annoyingly say things? I have no idea what they're That's saying. That's creepy. Yeah. I'm sorry as we can hear that as the observer. I know. It's strange. Oh, Chaos Storm. Uh, all in ish attempt by Coco. It doesn't have Ignite though. He was counting on Ambition to make the big plays there with the snowball. Nope. That was a ward clearing zoning ultimate. I think he wanted Ambition <laughs> to commit with the flash snowball, but Ambition was too weak. All right, Mad Life. Time to use your ult. That's right. Or your W. One of the two. Give it some health to Coco here. Yeah, that's nice. Watch the beautiful flower bloom. It's probably the most exciting thing that's happened so far in this game. Boom, bloom. Oh, oh yeah. Mm. 
Oh, here we go. Fury a little bit caught here. Mad Life looking to make a play, gets a slow, taking a lot of damage. Fury very, very low, and there's first blood going to space. They got just enough done between the ignite and the damage. Uh, Mad Life coming in there right at the end, really making it work out. Now, Coco oh, yeah. in a bit of trouble. He has no mana. Oh, Alt just barely misses Eve. That really looked like it would have hit, but I guess it didn't. Yeah, they, there's not really any follow-up, though, so Fury's death not carrying a whole lot of meaning right now. They're not going to be able to get a turret off of it. They're not really going to be able to get control back over this mid lane. Mm. Besides Mad Life just leaving a couple little extra health packets down there for Coco if he wants to. Yeah, Coco just gonna recall. You know, they never teach the dinosaurs to do truly entertaining things in Jurassic Park. Like, you could teach a Velociraptor to ride a bicycle, I'm pretty sure. I mean, they can already run like 60 miles an hour, but <laughs> if you taught them to ride a bicycle, that's a showstopper right there, you know? Well, you were just saying that they could ride other dinosaurs. That's well, because they would need, like, how in the world would a Velociraptor, like, sit down on a Brontosaurus? It could be a standing saddle, though. Jeez, you, you lack so much creativity. I guess so. <laughs> I don't know. I think I would just, if it were me, I would train the flying dinosaurs to carry me in, like, a hang gliding type harness. Yeah, that'd be pretty badass. Yeah, way better than riding a slow, boring Brontosaurus. Depends on if you want to crush crush people or not. Yeah, it depends on if the Brontosaurus wants to do it. <laughs> That's really who it's up to. <laughs> well, CJ trying to just zone a bit around the dragon. It's not there. Taking out some wards. What do you think the plan is? All this attention near the river right now. Clear vision. It's kind of surprising. For no reason. It's kind of surprising. Oh, he wants to eat that scuttle crab. <laughs> Tasty. <laughs> no one can de deny Nunu his feast. Delicious. Oh, they want to go for this, actually. Wow, they do. Luna just walking in, gets a little knock up on their ambition. Teleport coming in from ZJ, though. Valkyrie away immediately. Ambition tries to get the slow. They catch Fury with the tempered fate. Shy goes in. Oh, nice knock up there, actually. And they're actually going to catch him. Fury goes down. Eve in trouble as well. Luna gets a four-man pulverize, but that's not going to help too much as they're just going to dive anyway. And Bishop pick up the hill, but here comes Crown pushing Shy back into the turret. Nearly goes down. They manage to live. Wow, Space still alive as well too. Coco pushed out, but that Chaos Storm doing so much. And somehow, some way, CJ gets the near ace. Coco with the double kill. They get the turret. Kuve successfully farming top lane. <laughs> Well, and I think Kuve he must have canceled his I teleport right so, there yeah. on the entrance of that fight, so he kind of left him high and dry. But again, CJ with a really good tower dive, second game in a row where they've had one of those, and that is a huge reward. Four kills for zero, Man. two towers out of the magical journey. And one thing that Mad Life has been doing really well is using his shrines for speed buffs yeah. this game, actually placing them right underneath people. There's the Civarol going down. They want the engage. There's a flash. Get the knock up on the arcane smash. And Mad Life just going to do some autos right here. Nice pulverize to get the four man down. And here we go. Shy just going to tank the turret. He gets actually bounced around by the Azir ultimate. But he gets out just barely. Even though the ignite ticking down on him. And Crown will fall to ambition. So all of a sudden, we have a just a tremendous gold lean for CJ Entis. I mean, as far as Bard's W's go, unless once you're out of the laning phase, and it primarily is a speed boost that you use that for, and a little tip for Bard's out there, if you just Alt W, it automatically places it underneath you to give you the speed boost. Very neat. Yeah. So you can get, so you can catch up and get the kills. Now, Samsung did do a good job of taking out that mid turret right now because everyone on CJ was so low that they had a recall, so there was a bit of time to create some counterplay, but will they be able to get this next dragon that is up in seven seconds, given the large gold lead and the buys that CJ was able to accomplish? Yeah, I really think CJ has way too much of a lead for Samsung to fight this, and CJ would be tying up the dragons. It wouldn't be a, a dragon lead or anything like that, but it would be yet another power boost for a CJ team that's already a little wow. bit ahead. Samsung not even gonna fight the dragon. They just wanna kill Shy right now. There's a, he saw him with the ward and then, they're going to dive in. That turn pretty low here. Shive disrupting 
Luna quite a bit, backing away. They're just going to take out the turret, and that's going to give Shy time to back off. He's way too tanky to do that to right now. And there we go. CJ takes the dragon, gets their first of the game as well. So a bit of a trade right there, but still with the gold deficit, and now the first dragon done for CJ. They are going to push up into the mid lane. Yeah. Take a chance to get some uh, wards down as well, too. It just always, it always surprises me. I feel like CJ out of a lot of other teams just finds ways to punish small mistakes, you know? You don't often see them taking like one kill or something like that. They stretch it into like two or three and an objective or something. Yeah, you wish though that they had a little bit more presence in the early game. That's the thing is that they, they tend to be so risk averse that they won't even take plays that have a pretty decent percentage chance of working. Uh, and that leads to a lot of these passive early games that we've seen where they just wait and wait and wait before making a move. Yeah, so far so good. Shy trying to save that bot lane. He's going in, 1v3. The rest of CJ trying to catch up. There's a Paul Fry's onto Shy. Gets knocked up by Eve as well, too. Turret's still low. Eve taking a lot of turret shots. Mad Life coming in. Q onto Luna just for the slow. Yeah, Fury still pushing those. Crown is waiting in the wings. Ambition coming into the brush. He's going to get caught out a little bit. Oh, uh oh, Emperor survived. Used very early. Didn't push Ambition back into the team. And now Mad Life coming in with that mag magical journey. There's a the Tempered Faith. They get the flash from Crown. Luna caught, though. There's a kill for CJ. And they save their bottom turret as well, too. Samsung is playing so scared. So Shy had a little bit of a mind game right there because he popped his ult, popped Righteous Glory just to save the turret, and Samsung was thinking, uh-oh, where's everyone else? They didn't have enough information to see that no one else was coming in with him, and so they immediately backed off the turret. And then we also saw Crown just fail to use his ult properly onto Ambition right there, get that knockback, and then they had nothing else remaining to continue their siege. As a result, they're punished, they lose Luna, as well as their mid lane turret. Yeah, things definitely falling apart a bit for Samsung already in game number two. Mad Life getting to trade that ultimate for a flash is pretty nice, especially when it's a flash on the mid laner. Oh yeah, very good ultimate right there. You have oh, yeah. to flash if you're crown, as long if you're not going to be moving to a sand soldier anytime soon. A tempered fate has a much longer range than you would think it does too. You can yes, it does shoot that one from quite a ways away. So the new little critical hit thing kind of has that little like explosion thing next to it. Uh huh. It's kind of interesting. Critical hit thing. Is that your favorite part of League of Legends, Noah? It, it just makes it's a little bit confusing to me because it makes me think fire damage, yeah. and I'm like, well, where's the water damage and like lightning damage types and all that? Yeah, where are the different damage types? We should just needlessly complicate the game with different kinds of armors and resistances. Sounds great. Yeah. Needless complexity, the core of game design. Brand is coming back. <laughs> nope, no he's not. Not until they re rework him and make him not terrible. But his alt bounces past Zonia's now. <laughs> you can really tell the champs that were designed during the Riot period where they were releasing like a champion every two weeks. Because that was insane. There's, <laughs> there's such a lack of creativity in the kit. Now, that said, oh. Oh, temper fade on to Luna. And CJ can follow this one up. Luna pops the ult immediately. So tanky. Looks like he will be able to get away with a flash over the wall, at least. Yeah, no follow-up CC there, so yeah. really difficult to actually do anything with that. But yeah, I was to say, obviously the champs, since they slowed that release cycle down, have been great. I love all the new champions coming out now, but there was a, there was a period where the churn was making champions come out that shouldn't have... Uh, I think needed a bit more thought. Brand definitely one of those. There's a couple good ones out of that period. We, I think we got like Lulu and Zed out of there, didn't we? No, 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 no. This was uh, there. This brand, was like this was, was like the Brand Jin Zhao period. Ah, okay. Lulu was a little bit later than that, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. So that was like mid 2012, if I remember right. Yeah, it was way back in the day. Yeah. Way back in the day, when dinosaurs ruled the earth. <laughs> There's not really any dinosaur champions yet in League of Legends. Oh, nice stun. Oh, Mad Life really catching even Crown. Not getting any summoners out of it, but that was very close to a pick for CJ. There's Dino Nar. There is, yeah. 
There's dinosaur-esque champions. Which I guess is all you can really hope for. CJ just grabbing that blue buff. And backing off. Magical journey. Oh. Whoa. That new new snowball engage though. It did, yeah, on the flurry. Shy coming in from the side now. There's a flank. And twist advance on the Luna. They're gonna try to catch him. No ultimate means an easy pick on the support from Samsung. Got him right before his ult came back up. I wonder if Shy is ever going to use teleport to engage a fight. I don't know. <laughs> He's very obstinate about not actually going for those TP flanks. Used it very well for that dive on the bottom side, but he just doesn't sit in fountain like a lot of other top laners. Now they're going to go for the Baron, though. Uh, I think they just want to turn around this fight, too, and they will do that Shy right on the crown. Whoa, Samsung tries to come back in with even Kube, though. Ambition doing a nice job of zoning things. They do lose Mad Life, but Shy able to pick up a kill there, and CJ turning this fight around no problem. Kube goes down in the end, and it is a two for four in favor of CJ Entis. Well, at least Samsung was able to stop the Baron right there from going down, even though it was a 4v5 to start that fight, so they may have bought themselves a little bit of time at least. Take a look at how this went. The Tempered Fate misses, and Shy just goes straight in onto Crown, but Kuve does the same thing onto Space, and Coco in the back line, and you know, Fury, I think, smartly flashing forward right there, just trying to get onto their carries while Kuve was present presenting that threat. And he does get space in the end, but at the cost of his own life. Yep. Well, in the meantime, uh, Turret does go down finally in favor of Samsung. They get their bot lane tier one with that. Well, CJ all, so far ahead. Yeah, all Samsung could get right there, though, was just a turret. They got the Scuttle Crab, and now they may have to give up this dragon as well. They are so weak compared to CJ Antis at this point, and it is very difficult for them to engage into CJ Antis' composition with their zoning and disengage with the Sivir ultimate. They're easily able to kite out what Samsung has to throw at them. Yep, Ambition body blocking that too. Whoa, nice pick on the Coco there from Crown. Ain't gonna play there. Space though decides to walk through and get nearly killed as well. And there's a Whoops. magical journey on the way through, just giving him that little speed boost and heal. And they're actually gonna lose a couple of turrets for this. Wow. Oh, just one, actually. Turret yeah. in the mid lane. And Kuve putting the pressure on the side, so Coco taking the very lazy route back into the mid lane just gets hugely punished by Crown on nice. a combo back into an Azir turret. That was just, that was very careless from Coco. Space was lucky too. He just walked right past and nearly got taken out himself as well. Very lazy. Yeah, you don't really get the impression that CJ is, you know, really trying the hardest they can right now. Well, you have to be careful because that was perhaps an opportunity for Samsung just to go for a Baron if they really wanted to commit. Probably wouldn't have worked, but you can never tell when they might actually make that big, big try to get back into the game. Yeah, it's just not worth, it's not worth the risk. CJ just playing it safe. Everybody really just recalling. Except for Kuve. Still farming. Forever farming. Yep. Kuve in the bottom lane. Still has no armor. So that makes it very hard for him to do much of anything to space at all. Space will have that large kiting advantage. And pretty much always going to do bit damage to Kuve at this point, considering the last Whisper is nearing completion, and that's going to be his next big item. What do you think about the uh, Yomus on space? I feel like we don't see that a ton on Sivir these days. Some players really like it. It uh, works. Prey, Prey really likes it, for example. Uh, it's, it's definitely better in the early game, and you can really push down towers very quickly. And you know, space got it this game before even bought Boots 1, so it's like adding damage and having that mobility, especially in conjunction with the ultimate, without necessarily having to go for the early Boots. Samsung trying to put a little bit of pressure on the mid lane, but CJ just not going to have much of it. Tempered Fate used by Madlife to try to make a pick, but doesn't connect with everybody. He made golden minions. He did. Then they got gold out of the minions. That's where the golden minions come from. from Tempered Fate? Yeah. Bard just sits there inside the Nexus. 
tempered fading the minions before they go out. Sounds exciting. That's where Bard lives. That's where he mysteriously teleported to in that video. <laughs> the base? The Nexus. Hey, maybe that's where the shopkeeper gets all his items. Whoa, it's all coming together. <laughs> Bard, he actually doesn't care about protecting them. He just takes them so that he can resell them to the item guy in League of Legends. And then that gets passed on to the champions themselves. Bard, yeah. truly a reprehensible business tactic. He's like part art thief, part arms dealer. <laughs> I don't know how he's, he's an art thief. It's not well, really I mean, art. Some of those like magical artifacts, you know, show a considerable amount of artistry and magic. Space getting chased away by Eve. Has to use his ultimate to stay alive. Oh, a flank? Nah. Where is everybody? Top laners down in bottom lane. Maokai and Hecarim chasing each other around the jungle. Well, Shy's coming up because he's like, I'm not going to teleport into that fight. I got to walk there. <laughs> Real dead walk to fights. <laughs> That's right. Real trees walk to fight. Wow, this has been a very slow game. Yeah, no kidding. Both of these games have been a little bit on the uh, little bit on the slower side for sure. Luckily, our next series probably won't be too slow, given how. Early game focus the Koo Tigers have been these days and how active they've been in the laning phase. Yeah, and how weak IM has been. Yeah. yeah it's going to be, it could be a bit of a stomp. <laughs> probably, uh, probably you have to expect that one to be relatively one sided. Shy, show them your teleporting skills. <laughs> That's the goal. Uh, get it? Because he's using the goalkeeper. Uh, never mind. Oh. oh, tempered fate misses again. Trying to zone even Fury back into the team, though. Luna takes the bait, goes ahead to try to save his AD carry. It gets a bit low. Teleport coming in now for Shy. Luna tries to turn things around a little bit. Ambition looking for an option. And wow, Shy gets way deep into the Samsung team. He's so tanky right now. Just brawling in Ambition. Drops that ultimate. Doesn't really catch anybody with it, though. And CJ has to escape. Coco in a little bit of trouble here. They're going to go in on to him. Madlife throws the binding back, doesn't connect with anyone though. Yeah, Shy got the flank right there, but there just wasn't any follow up. By the time he got back there, space had been really just chunked out because they decided to engage oh into a choke this when could be. Crown had a Zeer and he had the Sand Soldiers in there. So, kind of unlikely that they were going to be able to follow up Shy's teleport in any meaningful way. 30 seconds until Dragon, so everyone still has time to get positioned on that objective, but just a really awkward fight. Well, I was wondering if Samsung was maybe going to try to turn around quickly on that Baron as well, too. Oh, that would have been a bit risky. I think it's the time in the, in the game to take risks, Monty. Yeah, but Coco was still pretty full HP right there, and his poke coming over the back of the pit could have been very dangerous. And uh, now Samsung at least looks like they have the priority over the pit. They don't have the speed shrine, however. Maokai pushing out the top wave and now coming all the way back down. Yep. Well, now he doesn't have a teleport. Samsung activates the dragon. They're going to go for it. Turning onto Ambition here. It's a 5v1. Uh, oh, CJ just jumps right onto the dragon as well, too. Ambition totally baiting back Samsung. Well, and now CJ has their spot in the river. Luna missed his pulverize onto Ambition. Here oh, we wow. go. Oh, wow. Ambition comes from the back. Zoning everyone out with that ultimate. Meanwhile, they catch Luna a little bit shy, getting in the back lines as well. Space, Mad Life, Ambition trying to kite back Coco as well. Coco lays a big death laser through the team, takes out Kube, and now CJ able to get the damage done to get the kills. A double comes in for Space, and Samsung on the run now. Crown still with a lot of health. He manages to turn around and get a kill onto Space. Gets caught up though by Victor, and there's a kill for Coco. Fury on his own, flashes away, but a double comes in. And CJ gets the ace, only losing space. And that play from Victor right there on Coco was very impressive. Got the stun down with the gravity field. Uh, it's thanks to a lot of the setup, too, from Bad Life's ultimate. So good, good flank from Ambition right there. And Luna, they tried to collapse onto Ambition early, but they missed their CC. And that bought enough time for Shy to get in there. Let's take a look at this. I mean, great job from Ambition right there. Now watch this. The zone, they have nowhere to go. So Kuve and Luna simply cannot get into the back line until it's far, far too late right there. And they're pretty much instantly destroyed as they're kited out. 
So good setup with the slow, and then it was kind of a choice between do we go into absolute zero, or do we walk into the gravity field from Victor? A very well coordinated team fight from CJ, but that's kind of what we're used to seeing, you know? Man, like that nice done there too yeah. at the end because he chained it right into the Victor gravity field. There was just nowhere for Crown to go. True enough. Now CJ threatening that Baron. They took their third dragon. And they can go ahead and try to push this a little bit farther. Yeah, they can. They can go. They can definitely do this Baron quite fast. Uh, and they have the ability to secure it thanks to the Nunu. But probably going to look for another pick before that actually happens. A little bit too dangerous just to start it right now. In spite of their gold lead, there's still a large amount of damage on the Samsung composition with Hecarim and Azir. Oh yeah, of course. You might as well play it safe from here on out. Uh, they're going to start it, though. They're going to go for it. They left a magical journey right into the pit. CJ turning it around. Oh, Luna goes in for nice head by Pulverize. Shy, though, already disrupting things in the back line. Nice zone from Ambition as well, too. Fury not touched quite yet, but there's a kill already for CJ. Oh, there we go. Fury really <laughs> touched at that point. Double kill again for space. Magical journey brings people through for a nice turnaround. On to Samsung and only Eve left to go. CJ's just going to walk in, probably take the inhibitor, and then grab the Baron on their way out. I really like watching Mad Life's follow-up magical journeys right yeah. here because he keeps cutting off angles and making sure that no one can get away from these team fights and that there's enough cleanup to just maximize CJ's benefits. It's going to happen again as they take an inhibitor. So CJ on the verge of closing this one out at this point. 12,000 gold ahead and long distance magical journey to get him right back to the Baron. And he did that before too. Everyone just starting that Baron super quickly because of a magical journey through the wall. Yep. So definitely using it to get that positional advantage and buy CJ more time also. Magical journey. That was a gratuitous journey, Mad Life. Huh. No. There is no journey that's not worth magically taking. <laughs> I think I saw that on a bumper sticker once or something. More meeps. Meeps, that's right. You can never have enough meeps. I don't know. I don't think you'd want a room full of meeps, Doa. They look really weird and annoying. They whisper to you all the time. They're a bit creepy. <laughs> it's true. So I think you can have enough meeps. Maybe they whisper encouraging things. They like, probably breed. Uh, yeah, the they probably breed like tribbles too. Yeah. Yeah. You just end up with meeps everywhere. I was gonna say you can draw some comparisons between meeps and tribbles. <laughs> that is very true. Samsung, oop. waiting for an opportunity. Space activates his ultimate. They're gonna bring in Luna. Nice tempered fate onto Kuve. Just all around slowing up Samsung, and that's allowing CJ to pick him apart. Ult comes back in from Kuve, but. CJ nearly untouched by that. Shy gets a twist advance in onto Crown. There's a double kill for Coco. Eve trying to escape, but Kube the only one getting out. Triple kill for Coco at the end, and that is going to be the end of the game and the end of the match. <laughs> Mad Life magically journeying <laughs> through the Nexus turret. And that is going to be that's gonna be it. That's all you do, you magically journey through the Nexus. Jeez. That's right. Well, Learn how to manor with Bard, bad life. It was a life. magical journey through that entire series for CJ. They come out with an easy 2-0 and a big grinning mad life on the sign. You didn't really see that too much. He's grimacing in real life, though. That looks like Space's smile, though. That's true. Coco, you don't really see smile a whole lot either. CJ's Ambition. not even happy to win at all. Ambition, you never see <laughs> smile. That's like a picture that somebody just drew there, like trying to guess what the smile looks like. Shy smiles, but only when the opposing top laner picks Shen. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's another tough loss for Samsung, but at least they beat IM last time. At least they did. We can They could look up for that at the very yeah. least. But pretty expected result tonight. CJ oh, yeah. seems to have gotten back on track. They, CJ just goes through these periods where they have these sudden hiccups for no reason and then manage to stabilize.